He touched him before he got his hands on that ball. I'm telling you. If you're a ball player or a fan, this is what it's all about. The World Series and 1975 will be remembered as the year that flesh and blood baseball teams met head on in a dream World Series. The Boston Red Sox, the American League champions, against the National League's Cincinnati Reds. It was a World Series marked by superpower. Super pitching. Two super catchers. Super effort. Super fans. It'll be remembered very clearly as truly a Super World Series. The U.S. Navy Color Guard parades the flag in Boston's Fenway Park. And Game 1 of the Super Series 75 is about to begin. For the Red Sox, Senor Luis Tian. From Cuban exile to King of the Hill in Boston. He gives you all kinds of motion. Elbows, fingernails, kneecaps, and somewhere in the middle of it all, there's a baseball. And they say that no matter where you sit in Fenway Park, sometime during the game, Tian's gonna look you right in the eye. And the fans love him. For Cincinnati, Don Gullett. Out two months with a broken thumb, but still a 15-game winner. It's the top of the fourth. Johnny Bench at the plate. Joe Morgan's at first, no score. And this is the showdown everybody's been waiting for. Luis Tian's good move against the base running skills of Joe Morgan. Doesn't get him. Red Sox aren't sure. Tian sets, throws. Umpire Nick Colossi calls it a balk. And Red Sox manager Daryl Johnson drops in for a chat. Tiant gets benched to pop out, and then he ends the inning by striking out Tony Perez. It's during this World Series that Red Sox owner Tom Yawkey is to say that the best all-around player the Red Sox have had is Carl Yastrzemski. Here's Yastrzemski making a believer out of Cincinnati's Dave Concepcion. The score is still nothing, nothing, top of the seventh, and watch this play. In the bottom of the seventh, Tian didn't look like a guy who hadn't been to bat in three years. Base hit. He did look like a guy who hadn't been on base in three years. Johnny Pesky gives him a jacket and says, now make a left turn. Dwight Evans wants Tian to second. Make a U-turn, Lloyd. <laughs> Don Zimmer has to reintroduce himself and says, hey, Louie, I'll be the next guy you see. I'm at third base. The fans love it. Denny Doyle singles Tiant to third. And Yastrzemski's single sends him home. But you know, you can forget things in three years. Touch the plate, Louie. The Red Sox keep rolling. Petroselli's single off reliever Will McEnany scores two more. Barky Anderson's unhappy. Rick Burleson's single drives in the fourth run. And Carlton Fisk slides in with the fifth run of the inning. And the Sox get another one before they retire. Treasury Secretary William Simon threw out the first ball. He's a spectator. And Luis Tian, who started the big inning, now finishes it. And Tian goes back to the mound with a six to nothing lead. Tian closes the door, one, two, three in the eighth, and in the ninth, he gets Perez. George Foster is the second out. Concepcion makes the third out. 
and the Red Sox have won the first game of the World Series six to nothing. The drill for Tian is doubled because it happens in front of his father, who Tian has not seen in 14 years. It was tough to tell who was prouder. Yes, you are. Right. You know, I guess after the 14 years, I don't see my father. That's the first game in the World Series he see, and my first game for me too. And I'd be glad. You know, like I said before, I thank you, God, I can be with him again. Game number two was a salute to the Navy on his 200th birthday. The game honored more than a half million Navy men and women who have worn the Navy uniform with pride. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Seaman Carl C. Glencross tosses out the first ball under rainy skies. Left-hander Bill Lee continues to hold Cincinnati scoreless until the fourth inning. Morgan walks. Johnny Bench singles, sending Morgan to third. And when Tony Perez hits into a force play, the big red machine scores its first run of the series. In the top of the sixth, with two men out, Johnny Bench. It's a sinking line drive towards center fielder Fred Lynn. You can see it wasn't just as batting that made Lynn the first rookie in baseball history to be named his league's most valuable player. Watch this play again. Fred Lynn. Bottom of the sixth inning, two out, one on. Rico Petroselli against Cincinnati starter Jack Billingham. One swing of the bat, and the game turns around. The Red Sox lead two to one. And despite a 27-minute rain delay, Bill Lee holds the Boston lead until the ninth. The lights are on. Johnny Bench is the hitter. Number five, Johnny Bench. Bench, looking for an outside pitch, gets it and hits an opposite field double. Lee leaves, Daryl Johnson goes to his bullpen. Number 41, Dick Gregor, now pitching from Boston. Got a man on second base, Dick. I'll tell you what, just get right, second sign on right, but the thing about it is just go right in and hard, in and out, up and down, so we'll get right after him, come on. Dick Drago gets two quick outs. Tying run is on third, one out left, and Concepcion is the batter. Bouncing ball up the middle, an infield hit, and the game's tied. Cincinnati's base running speed, so far not a factor, suddenly becomes very important. Ken Griffey at bat. Concepcion breaks for second. Makes it. And the tie-breaking run is in scoring position. Griffey doubles to left center field. Concepcion scores to make it 3-2. to two. That's the way it ends. And the 1975 World Series leaves Boston tied one game apiece. Game three and Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium. Red Sox manager Daryl Johnson was a member of a pennant-winning Cincinnati team, but that was in Crosley Field days, so Sparky Anderson conducts a guided tour. It's about 20 feet behind all the way. Everything else you'll hear is The Reds start Gary Nolan, who won 15 games in 1975 after missing nearly two complete seasons with shoulder problems. Top of the second, Nolan pitches to Boston catcher Carlton Fisk. And there she goes, the first home run of this 1975 World Series. Two games in a small ballpark in Boston, no home runs. In the big ballpark here, this is the first of six home runs in the game. In the fourth, starter Rick Wise against Johnny Bench. Two-run homer. The next inning, back-to-back -back home runs by Concepcion and Cesar Geronimo. 
And these were followed by a triple by Pete Rose. And watch him run. Rose says he always gives 110%, and it shows. Rose scores on Joe Morgan's sacrifice, flying the Reds' lead 5-1. Number one, Bernie Carbo. In the seventh, Bernie Carbo was sent up to pinch hit with the score 5-2. Clay Carroll is the pitcher. And there she goes. And there goes Clay Carroll. Do you think he was upset? Now pitch to Cincinnati, number 37, Will McEnany. Petroselli singles the center. And Sparky Anderson lives up to his nickname of Captain Hook, and he brings in his fifth pitcher of the game, Raleigh Eastway. Dwight Evans is the batter. Number 24, Dwight Evans. And there she goes, over the left field wall, a home run, and the game is tied at 5-5. Five to five. Foster is unhappy. And now comes the most talked about play of the series. Pinch hitter Ed Armbrister bunts. Catcher Fisk moves for the ball. His throw goes into center field. The runners move to second and third, and here comes Red Sox manager Daryl Johnson. The man ran into him with a thing. He was interfering, and you went to call it. You tell me what you were calling, man, but he did it. On a play like that, I'm telling you, the man interfered with that man on the play. I'm telling you, I want to see a man down here. Come here. You mean to tell me that you can't help him on a play like that when he hasn't even touched the ball? And the man was interfering with him. Trust me, there's no interference when a ball is hit and the catcher goes for the ball and a batter tries to get out of the box. And the batter tries to get out of the way. He was all over the catcher. When the batter comes out of the box after hitting the ball and the catcher makes a play, there is no interference. I'm going to tell you something. That's not the way the play went. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know what you're going to make a ruling on that, but I want you to explain exactly what you were looking at when you called the play. He was moving for the ball, and the runner was moving to first. The runner was all over the catcher. Right, so there. I can't help that it happened right there. I'll tell you one thing. It's a lousy operation, and you and I know it right now. It's a lousy operation. Armchair umpires all over the country got in on this one, but umpire Larry Barnett's was the decision that counted. Johnson now brought in Roger Moret to pitch to the dangerous Joe Morgan, everybody's choice for the National League's most valuable player. The defense is in to cut off the run. But Morgan hits it over Fred Lynn's head. And Cincinnati wins six to five and ten innings to go ahead in the series, two games to one. Here's Morgan on that subject. Well, when I go up in the base loaded and I got a chance to win a ball game like that, I go up to get a base hit. I wasn't up there trying to hit a fly ball or a ground ball to get him in. I wanted to get him in with a clean single to center field. I try to revert back to the basic fundamentals of hitting and try and do a good job. The Red Sox, hoping to even the series, named Luis Tiant to come back in game four. But Tiant, who shut out the Reds in the first game, has problems right away. Pete Rose leads it off. Single to center field. Griffey hits the next pitch to left center field. It's a double. Scoring Rose. Griffey was out trying to stretch it to a triple. Joe Morgan walked, and with two out, Johnny Bench is the hitter. Bench lines one between Evans and Lynn, a two-base hit, and it scores Morgan with the second run. Two to nothing, Cincinnati. And for the first three innings, Cincinnati's Fred Norman kept the door closed. But then in the fourth inning, with two on and one out, Dwight Evans is the hitter. Evans triples to right center field, tying the game. You got me now? That's the way we're going to go, and I'll keep in contact with you as we go. But just get them prepared that way, okay? Thank you. Good. Perfect. Rick Burleson singles over Concepcion, and Boston leads 3-2. to two. 
Sparky Anderson goes with his bullpen for Pedro Barbon. Second, you got one out. Okay. You have to come to a stop, Pete. Now, I'm oh. telling you. Okay. One out, and then on second. You know, look in here and give him a stop. And Barbon has to face the hot bat of Luis Tiant. Tiant singles. And that raises his batting average for the series to 500. Burleson scored on an error, and then Yastrzemski hit this one to shallow center field, but watch the bounce. Tian scores, and the Red Sox lead 5-2. to two. This game is not an easy one for Luis Tian. Two out in the fourth. And George Foster is a batter. Foster, an infield hit. Good try, but not in time. Concepcion hits one to left center, where some of the Red Sox players decide to hold the meeting. Foster scores, and it's 5-3 Boston. Sparky and Klazuski enjoyed it. Geronimo is the hitter. And Geronimo lines down the left field line. It gets past Juan Benicas, and it goes for a three-base hit. The score, five to four. And as easy as Tiant made it look in the first game, that's how tough this one is. Geronimo leads off the ninth with his third hit of the game. Armbrister is up there. Armbrister bunts, this time without incident. And it moves Geronimo to second. Luis Tiant is concerned. Mrs. Tiant is concerned. Daryl Johnson is concerned. What do you guys think? I got a left-hander down here, Louis. Can you get him? All right. All right. You get right after them. If that ball comes back to you, make sure it one out there. And get after him good. Come on. Pete Rose walks, so Ken Griffey comes to the plate with the tying and winning runs on base. Griffey hits a line drive to center that looks sure to be off the wall. What a catch. Watch it again. Fred Lynn. But Tian still has a problem. Joe Morgan. Geronimo is at second base. Watch him break. Tian throws. Morgan pops it up. It was the 163rd pitch of the game. The Red Sox win what one big league manager used to call a cliff dweller. Boston 5, Cincinnati 4. Game five, and Bernie Carbo and Pete Rose visit before the game. The fifth game saw the Red Sox score in the first on Denny Doyle's triple and a sacrifice fly by Yastrzemski. In the fourth, Reggie Cleveland is shutting Cincinnati out when Tony Perez comes to the plate. Perez is looking for his first hit of the series. He's 15 for all. But with one swing of the bat, it's goodbye slump. Goodbye baseball and goodbye Red Sox lead. We're tied at one apiece. Bottom of the fifth, and it's Cincinnati pitcher Don Gullett. Gullett single. Cleveland against Pete Rose. Rose doubles into the left field corner. Don Gullett scores, and the Reds lead two to one. And now we'll see another way that Joe Morgan helps his ball club. After he walks in the bottom of the sixth, Joe Morgan breaks for second. Watch Denny Doyle. He's pulled towards the bag, and Johnny Bench hits right through the hole vacated by Doyle. 24. 
Tony Perez. And then Tony Perez shows that the slump is really over. There she goes. We have ourselves a five to one ball game. Down Gullet comes into the ninth inning having given up only two hits. Johnny Bench will say later, I've never seen him better. And there are two outs in the ninth, but the Red Sox still aren't convinced. Yastrzemski singles, and so does Fisk. And here is Fred Lynn. A double down the right field line, scoring Yaz. And Sparky Anderson decides that it's time to make a change. A record crowd of 56,393 give Gullet a standing ovation. Number six, Pico Petroselli. Eastwick comes in, strikes out Petroselli, and the World Series moves back to Boston with the Reds leading three games to two. What do you do on a rainy day in Fenway? Well, you don't play baseball. Commissioner Bowie Kuhn and the staff of umpires inspect the field. And they announce there's no chance. Three days of rain, three postponements, and hardly a man is now alive who remembers that day in 75 when this World Series started. Finally, the clouds and the tarpaulin were both rolled back. And the fans sat down, not realizing that they were about to see the game to which other World Series games would be compared for years to come. Here on the official lineup. For the Boston Red Sox, it was win or go home, so they went with the ace, Luis Tian. He got the Reds out in the first. And Gary Nolan went to the mound for Cincinnati. Nolan got the first two batters, and then Yastrzemski and Fisk single. Here is Fred Lynn. There she goes, a home run. And Fenway Park goes wild as the Red Sox take a first inning three nothing lead. The amazing Fred Lynn. That's still the score in the top of the fifth. Armbruster walks for Cincinnati, and it brings up Pete Rose. Rose singles, and there are men on first and third. Griffey hits one to deep center field. Lynn goes back, makes a great try, but the ball is off the wall for a triple. Both runners score, but all eyes are on Lynn, slumped to the ground in center field, and noisy Fenway Park is silent. Move your legs all right, huh? Yeah. I'll be okay. You sure? Yeah. The famous left field wall in Fenway has been ignored up to now. But Johnny Bench singles off it and ties the score at 3-3. Watch Yastrzemski play that ball perfectly. Perez is out and the inning is over. Tied at 3-3. In the seventh, Griffey opens with a single. Joe Morgan punches a base hit to left. Luis Tiant gets the next two men, Bench and Perez, but George Foster doubles high off the center field wall, and the Reds lead 5-3. to three. Top of the eighth inning, and the Reds, who had trailed by three, now lead by three when Geronimo hits his second home run of the series. Daryl Johnson goes to the mound and signals for Roger Moret. Okay, Moret. 
It is not Keon's night, but the Red Sox fans still love their Louie. It's the bottom of the eighth, and even the diehard Red Sox fans can't realize that, as Al Jolson used to say, they ain't seen nothing yet. Lynn singles. Petroselli walks, and Sparky Anderson brings in Eastwick. You're ready now, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. You got first and second, nobody out. Let's go to work. Eastwick is his sixth pitcher of the game. And after he gets two outs, Bernie Carbo is the pinch hitter. The tying runs are on. And after two strikes, Bernie Carbo gives a hitting clinic of his own. First, the worst looking swing of the series, and it's foul. Then the perfect swing, and this one is fair. And it's also gone. The game is tied at six and six. The Red Sox have come back from a three-run deficit. They're back in the World Series, and nobody knows that better than Bernie Carbo. Fenway Park is going wild. Except in certain parts. Dick Drago gets the Reds 1-2-3 in the ninth. In the Boston ninth, Denny Doyle walks. Yastrzemski singles and Sparky changes pitchers. This time it's Will McEnany. He walks Fisk intentionally. Bases loaded. Nobody out. And Fred Lynn the hitter. Lynn hits a fly ball to short left field. Caught by Foster. And watch what happens when Doyle tries to score. McEnany gets Petroselli to ground out, and we go into extra innings. In the top of the 11th, Rose goes to first base when the plate umpire says that Drago's pitch hit him. Fisk doesn't think so. Ball never touched him. You, can you say for sure on a play like that it didn't hit the man's shirt? That's what I saw, what I heard, and what I called. And it didn't wasn't anything to do with his glove or a damn no, thing. No, no. Rose said later it might have hit a string on his uniform. I don't know. Griffey bunts. Fisk makes a perfect throw to get Rose. Joe Morgan is the batter. Morgan lines one to right field. What a catch. Sparky Anderson was to say later, it was just about the greatest catch I've ever seen. Watch it again. Evans told reporters, I just stuck out my glove, and the next thing I knew, I was throwing it to first base. Now he realizes he got the double play. It's the 12th inning, and although it's after midnight, the only empty seats are in the Cincinnati bullpen. And their eighth pitcher, Pat Darcy, is pitching against Carlton Fisk. Fisk takes the first pitch high. Ball one. Then he swings. There she goes. Now watch Fisk. He uses all the body English he can get. He will tell reporters later it was a question of it being fair or foul. The wind must have carried it 15 feet toward the foul pole. I just stood there and watched. I didn't want to miss seeing it go out. Here it is again. How to sum up this game? Well, maybe it was done best by Cincinnati's Pete Rose, who said, I never like to lose, but I'm proud to have played in this ball game.
The unbelievable 1975 World Series goes to Game 7. But here's Fisk. It's probably one of the most exciting ball games that I've ever played in. Uh, regardless of whether it's been a World Series or whether it's been a regular ball game, but even more so since it was a World Series. It was a crucial game for us and uh, maybe a crucial game for baseball itself. We, I think we showed a lot of people how the game's supposed to be played. The World Series, which started as a best four out of seven, boils down to a best out of one. 35,000 in the ballpark and an unprecedented 76 million television viewers will get set for the deciding game. Cincinnati's Don Gullett walks Bernie Carbo in the third. And then Denny Doyle, who has hit safely in every game, does it again with this single, which sends Carbo to third. Yastrzemski is the batter. Base hit. And when Doyle goes to third, Yastrzemski takes second on the throw. Anderson orders an intentional walk for Fisk. It looks like a perfect move when Fred Lynn is out on strikes. Petroselli walks on a full count to make the score two to nothing. And then Dwight Evans walks on four pitches to make it three to nothing. Don Gullett, though, gets Burleson, and that ends the inning. But the Boston Red Sox lead three to nothing. That's the lead that left-hander Bill Lee, the one they call Spaceman, took into the sixth inning. Two outs, one on. And Tony Perez is at the plate. Bill Lee tries a big slow curve. And Perez rides it right out of the ballpark. The outspoken Lee said later, I made a bad pitch. I lived by the slow curve all year and I died by the slow curve. Lee survives the home run by Perez, but he's knocked out by a blister on his finger in the seventh. Johnson wants the left hand to Moret, and the Boston fans thank Lee for an outstanding effort. Ken Griffey was on second base when Moret pitched to Pete Rose. Rose, his tenth hit of the series, and the seventh game is tied up 3-3. Now it comes down to the Cincinnati ninth. Jim Burton is the pitcher for Boston. Ken Griffey walks. Geronimo bunts. Petroselli slips but makes a great play at first base. I tell you what, now look at you don't have to if you, walking this man doesn't bother me a bit. Okay? Right. So you can go ahead and you can just work on him and let, let Jim throw his curveball and mm -hmm. just pop and don't worry about it. You know. This guy's a, a good fastball hitter. Just move the ball around, shoot for the black, okay? Pete Rose does walk. There are two outs, two on, the score tied, 3-3, and two strikes on Joe Morgan. Burton throws a slider low and away. Fred Lynn charges hard, but he can't reach it. Griffey scores with the go-ahead run. In the meantime, Pete Rose shows him why they call him Charlie Hustle and how he got to be named the series' most valuable player. For the Boston Red Sox, it has all come down to this turn at bat. Cincinnati gets two quick outs, and now it's Will McEnany against Carl Yastrzemski, who has made it happen here so many times. Yes, it's a high fly ball to Geronimo in center field. And the 1975 World Series becomes not just history, but history written in big, bold letters for baseball fans to point at for years to come. The Cincinnati Reds are the world champions. The Reds win the World Series four games to three. It's a series where players on both teams can walk away with an enormous feeling of pride. It's a World Series that has given the fans who expect thrills in a World Series more than they expected. It is something special. A World Series that will be remembered for what it was, a Super Series.